What do I need to do with my career to stay employed, to have career opportunities? That is a trend that you want to follow to stay relevant and to stay highly employable. Hi there, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about information that I received from the latest Gartner Symposium for 2022. Gartner, if you don't know it, is a service provider that helps companies, especially in the information technology field, to make informed decisions. How does Gartner do that? Gartner has some of the brightest minds in the industry available. They hire these people, these people go out and review services, products, they write white papers, they create scenarios and then look at what is it good or bad or what should be changed. And then Gartner collects all this information, puts it into a consumable way for companies to retrieve that information and then make informed decisions. So these decisions uh, could be made really based on your pulling down data, documents from Gartner, or you talk to a Gartner specialist on the phone, on Zoom, whatever it is, and ask that person question and get information from them. Gartner also provides the magic quadrant, which you might have heard about. That's really this quadrant where Gartner puts companies and service providers for a specific topic, area, service, product, whatever it is, into this quadrant and then says, okay, for this use case, these companies might be your best option. For that use case, these other companies might be your best options. And so you can really go and look at this and then make informed business decisions and potentially even get pricing information so that you know, okay, I'm not being overcharged or no, I'm getting a fair value for the money that the vendor is asking me. So Gartner is that service provider that so many companies rely on and their word carries a lot of value. So Gartner on the latest symposium talked about cloud. And one thing they talked about is the private cloud. Private cloud, just for you to understand, is really the hardware and software and virtual infrastructure or virtual platform that companies have in their own data center to run and provide services to their internal users. Of course, these could also be internet facing users, but overall we just say this is an internal cloud to provide internal services. So running a private cloud is pretty expensive. When you run a private cloud, you have to think about, you need internet connection and you don't just need one uplink to the internet, you probably need two or three so that you have the right level of redundancy. You might need a second site, a second data center or server room somewhere else geographically dispersed so that if one goes down that the other one can take over. So you need not just uplinks to the internet in one location, you need it in two locations. And then think about you need servers, racks, power, generator, batteries potentially, data center set up with networks, switches, routers, firewalls. You need specialists, information technology professionals that maintain this environment. So these people are highly educated and of course they're not cheap to have. So the overall cost to run a private cloud is really high. With providers like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, AWS, there are public cloud options available. Of course, there are other providers. I'm just talking about the top three here, but it's more and more appealing to companies to move quite a few loads and applications and services into the public cloud, reduce their local footprint, save money here and gain redundancy and potentially better services by using the public cloud, be it AWS, Azure or Google. So if you are a systems administrator and you want to get into cloud services and your employer has a private cloud, just keep this in mind. And private cloud investments that were made in the last few years will not just simply disappear, but it will be a trend that workloads and services move into the public cloud when highly expensive decisions have to be made. So you will slowly see a reduction of private cloud and these loads and services and therefore also the maintenance, the system administration move into the public cloud. Then there will always be industries and companies that will need to maintain local storage, local services within their premises. So private cloud will not go away, but you will see less companies running their private clouds. You will see industries that potentially move completely away from private cloud or servers and data centers and just use public infrastructure at one of the providers that I mentioned before. So that's something to keep an eye on because if the number of open positions in your geographical area is slowly going down for these type of IT professionals that are related to private cloud, well, you might have to look and 
think about what do I need to do with my career to stay employed, to have career opportunities. By the way, public service announcement. If you are not sure where to take your IT career or you want to get into information technology and are just not sure which direction to go, I offer career coaching service for information technology specialists or people that want to become information technology specialists. So very important to look at these trends and really just follow them so that you understand when it's time to jump ship or when it's time to upgrade your skill set and move your skill set into the public cloud if you still want to work in this area or if you need to specialize and maybe go into like database administration or cybersecurity. I will link to some videos here so that you can check out videos that are made about a day in the life of a database administrator or a day in the life of a cybersecurity professional. What is so appealing about the public cloud? So there are companies like Microsoft with Microsoft Azure, Amazon with Amazon AWS and Google that spent millions of dollars or maybe billions of dollars together to build a global infrastructure of data centers and connect them with fiber and high-speed internet connections so that your services are geographically redundant, that they can take an entire data center offline, do maintenance on it, move it back into production and your services that you are renting, you will not even notice that they are doing it. So these loads shifting into the public cloud can be very, very appealing to companies. And so it's really critical that you understand if this is shifting, your skill set needs to shift as well. With this shift into the public cloud, you also need to look at applications and services that are shifting towards the cloud. Think about Microsoft. Microsoft SCCM is one of those tools that is heavily on-prem redundant. It's the Microsoft management tool for end user devices, push software, push policies, maintain certain levels of security, and just be one of those administrative tools that almost every company that is a Microsoft shop is running. If you look at SECM that way, and then you keep an eye on what is Microsoft doing with Microsoft Intune as an example. So Intune is slowly taking over quite a few of the services that SECM has been providing. And then you see that Microsoft is also changing the roadmap for SECM and it's shifting towards the cloud. So if you are an administrator that is highly dependent on SECM and you're not preparing for this move into the cloud, well, you might be in for a surprise from your career perspective that suddenly there are much less positions for you. Or you may lose your job because you're outdated, you're a dinosaur. You have not adapted to the change of technology. So keep an eye on these products and services that you are working on. And is there a shift where this product is really moving into the cloud or focusing on the cloud? Because that is a trend that you want to follow to stay relevant and to stay highly employable. Now that we know that so many workloads are shifting into the cloud, always keep an eye on the local employment market. Do not necessarily do this to find another or better paying job, but look for trends. If companies in your area are looking for a different type of position over time, or you see more and more postings for a certain skill set that gives you an idea that the market is shifting, maybe spend some time researching this and then go and upgrade your skill set. If it's not your interest anymore, then look at something different so that you make that move early enough and are positioned well so that your IT career is not coming to a screeching halt and suddenly you find yourself with a box in your hand walking out of the building with all your personal stuff and you have to find a new job. The other option with that is you can upgrade your skill set early and become one of those ahead of the curve specialists that companies are looking for when they are making that shift. I did this many years ago with virtualization and almost, and I was one of those subject matter experts where a lot of companies had interest in to hire me and I was able to really choose the jobs that I wanted to have and the workplace where I wanted to work. So there is an opportunity for you to get ahead of the curve and really learn a skill set that employs you for many years to come. And of course, if the private cloud is going away, it will not go fully away. I mentioned this before. So there will be hybrid clouds. There are also terms that you can research like edge cloud services. So take a look at these and really identify what is developing in this area where you potentially have an opportunity to upgrade your knowledge, upgrade your skill set, and then find a better job to work at if you want to, or 
be that leading specialist at your current workplace and really help guiding that company into the right direction. So I hope this gives you an idea of how important it is to follow industry trends, how important it is to look at vendors like Gartner and just see what are they publishing for the magic quadrant for certain products or services. Maybe even talk to a Gartner specialist or see if you can go to one of those conferences to get an early glimpse at technology trends and then adjust your career. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. And I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.